Okay. Very good. Good morning, Cobra Banker George. I, yeah, this is a beautiful morning. It, it's, it's, uh, it, finally, we are cooled down a little bit, you know. And uh, I think the, the temperature is pretty chilly in the, in the morning because when I walk the dog, I had, put, I had to put on a jacket today, you know, that was a surprise to me. Uh, but, but that's good uh, because the weather is so nice that you can uh, start uh, door knocking again and uh, do your prospecting and do your normal uh, uh, real estate uh, uh, activity without the threat of the heat. So, um, you know, uh, we actually, we only have about two more months for the year. So this is time to, to wrap it up and then, you know, catch the, the last win of, uh, of the real estate. And, uh, you know, if you haven't uh, uh, fulfilled your uh, uh, goal already, this is time to do it, okay? So uh, with that, I would uh, I'd like to start the meeting. And uh, actually today we have, um, we have uh, uh, Keaton, uh, Hemrod, uh, uh, the insurance guy from, from uh, Greyhawk, and uh, he will be our, our the affiliate spotlight today. He will uh, tell us about how to, uh, how to maximize the, the insurance and how to uh, uh, you know, uh, evaluate the insurance, whether it's adequate for the, for the uh, for your property or not. And there's some tips and for, the, for shopping the insurance as well. So, um, but uh, with that, uh, I'd like to, to introduce the other affiliates first. And uh, Nancy, you go first this time. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. While well, we're waiting for good news uh, for the Fed to lower the uh, interest rate, so I think everybody go out there showing houses. And I think there's a lot of lender also has the first time home buyers uh, uh, incentive. So, you know, get to know the lenders and, and, and get to know the program so you can talk to your buyers. And also your seller will be getting more offers. So get prepared and contact all your old clients. This is a good uh, way to start the, the fall season. Thank you very much, Peter, Michelle, everybody. Have a great uh, week. Let me know if you need anything. Thank you, Nancy Chan, lawyer's title. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Good. John, uh, next. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Peter, Michelle, allowing us to be here and 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 educate and keep up to date uh, all the agents of all the news and everything going on. Remember, we're the only company that include the FHDS card form in the reports, and I'm here to help you and consult with you and your clients how to fill it out properly so that you get it done and understand what it's all about. Another thing is we have the free lease report. The lease report is required in addition to the lease agreement and it's a flood zone only report. And I'll go over it next week because I'm the I'm the spotlight. But uh, basically that's what that is. And it is required on all leases. And it's another way to figure out if the property is affected by flood zone. It is a free report. All I have to do is set you up on an, a, a, your account and away you go, you can order 24 uh, seven. The other thing is, is what's going on now? Did anyone feel the morning's earthquake? 2.8. This morning? Yes, two point eight at seven oh five this morning, six miles northeast of uh, Malibu. Wow. I felt the one last week. I was in the uh, West San Gabriel parking lot when that one hit, and at first I thought it was a, just a big garbage truck or a truck going by, but it continued. So I just went whoa, and then I turned on the radio and I heard that the yeah it was an earthquake. Um, the best way to deal with these things is get your snap and issue reports up front. Look to see if the property is affected by fire, flood, earthquake fault, seismic hazard, and it's free. There is no charge unless it closes, but we can get those things up front so you can best guide your clients regarding those things. And also ask me, or reach out to me and I'll send you the FEMA recommended earthquake prepared kit. Uh, suggestion and guidelines. I have those as well. I'm only a phone call or email away. I bring you 30 years of experience and let's have a great meeting and a great rest of September. We're a week away from starting winter. So, you know, it's a great time to reach out and check in on all your uh, sphere of influence and all your clients to see how they're doing and see if they need advice because you are the real estate professionals. I'm the NHD Tax and Environmental Specialist. And my information will be in the chat. 
Let's have a wonderful day and a great close to September. Thank you. Thank you, John. But uh, we are not into winter yet, I hope. <laughs> we're, we're just in autumn. <laughs> okay. But uh, John is very helpful in a lot of ways. You know, he comes by the office and, and talk to us, and it's very helpful. So in, in case you have any questions, just come in, you know, no, no, no question asked. Um, okay, now let's uh, go with uh, Nicole Minot uh, from Fidelity National. Nicole? Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday. Welcome to a new week of opportunities. And I just wanted to share, for those of you that are taking advantage of our Fidelity Agent app, there is a new update. If you have not update, updated your app, I recommend that you do. It will help you, especially with the changes that have taken place. And as we're all saying here, farming is important. There's some wonderful pieces in there that you can use uh, in the, the premium feature. So make sure that you also upgrade to the premium feature as well. And again, these are your closing costs. It's the number one closing cost app in the real estate industry. And we highly recommend that you take advantage of it to help you with your business as well as our website. There are informational flyers on there. So if you're looking for content to use when you're out door knocking, take a look at those uh, pieces. And if you'd like access to any of these or if you need assistance with your farming, contact me. I left my information in the chat. Have a fantastic day. And thank you, Peter and Michelle, for allowing the affiliates to join you each week. We truly appreciate you. Have a fantastic week. And remember, Nicole and Yvonne, Fidelity National title. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. We surely will remember you, Nicole. Yes, Thank you're very uh, amicable and uh, helpful. So, uh, all right. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, let's, let's go to Unita, uh, home warranty, the 13 month home warranty. Unita. Thank you, Peter. Good morning, everyone. Unita Wu from Home Warranty of America, the 13 month home warranty. I hope you guys are doing well. And happy Monday. Um, just want to give you guys to let you know that we do have an ADU available if you guys need an ADU to be added. And also we have a rekey. A lot of people have been asking me for the rekey. So the rekey could be claimed anytime after you close off escrow. That will be including six cylinder in your home and four new key that will be included into the home warranty. Also want to let everybody knows we are 13 months, so we give additional one month free and our trade call fee is still low at $75. If you guys any need home warranty, please reach out to me anytime. I do have an English, Chinese brochure and Mandarin and Spanish brochure as well. And I'm here to help anytime. Thank you again. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Michelle and the team. Thank you. Thank you, Yumita. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, I think that is all the uh, affiliates. If I miss anybody, um, well, besides Sir Keaton, of course, he, he's the, the affiliate's uh, spotlight today. So any anybody I missed besides Keaton? Well, if not, then uh, let's uh, welcome uh, Keaton uh, Heimerow uh, from Greyhawk uh, Insurance. Keaton? Hey, Peter. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, sorry for my my camera. I was trying to troubleshoot all, all morning, but I restarted and everything and I can't get it to work. So I'm going to have to get this serviced. But um, yeah, I'm here to talk about everyone's favorite subject, um, insurance. Uh, it's, it's been challenging still, has been for this this year and the year before. Um, and today I'll try and talk about some of the more positives uh, and how to see the value in keeping a building up to date. Um, I, I run into a lot of issues when trying to find coverage for landlords, them seeing the, the importance of keeping their building up to date and how it can impact them negatively if they don't. And then on the flip side of that, I'll also be trying to talk about how to negotiate a lower price using that building information as realtors, um, because with that ammo, you know what to look for, you know what will, you know, give your, your clients problems if they do end up closing on a, on a building that isn't up to date. So I like to think about it this way when I explain to, to, to my clients is, you know, as a landlord, your properties are the business. Those are the assets. And just like a good business does, they have they have to oil the machine. You know, they, ha they have to 
make sure they're training their employees, uh, making sure that the, the, the floors and stuff are safe, that you know the customer service is good. They have to invest into the company to make it a good business, right? And as a landlord, that business are your properties, right? You have to keep the plumbing updated. You have to keep the roof updated, electrical updated. You have to make sure you know it's it's habitable for your clients. It's investments you have to make, the cost of doing business. So these landlords have to treat their properties like a business. Uh, the analogy I give um, is sort of related to employees. A business must hire and train employees and make sure that their job is safe. You know, they have to have proper equipment, um, make sure, you know, the, the floors are, aren't slippery. You have to keep them safe because, you know, like a, a landlord who has to buy property insurance, a business owner has to buy insurance for their employees. And a bad business owner isn't going to have procedures in place to keep their employees safe. And, you know, a carrier will pay you, pay you claim money if they get injured, but then next year your, your insurance is going to go up. And the same, same thing on the property side for a landlord. If you don't keep your building up to date, even if you haven't had claims, you know, as, as time goes on, your building gets older and older and the more at, uh, the, the higher chance of you having a claim, uh, that, that's going to keep going up and carry your C that and they're going to charge appropriately. So if you don't update, you're going to pay more in premium. It's the cost of doing business. So you need to invest in your properties. Um, now, the biggest uh, hurdle I have as an insurance agent is communicating this in a way that's understandable because it's very common right now for a landlord who comes to me, they're paying about $10,000 annually, but as insurance carriers start to crack down and they're continuing to do so, you know, their, their premium goes from $10,000 to $50,000 oh. just in one year. And that's not money you're going to get back. That's not an investment. That's not an investment by any means. Cause after you pay that premium, yeah, it covers you for that year. But if you don't have a claim that year, you're not getting that money back. And if, you know, if that building is 50 years old, built in, you know, 1970 and has never had updates to the electrical panels, you bet you're going to be paying a lot more money. And it's a far better investment to update your building, update those electro panels, update the plumbing. And if you're not spending money on those updates, you'll be spending it in insurance premiums. Because if you're paying $50,000 a year after paying 10,000 previous year, you're gonna keep on paying that $50,000 price tag, if not more, year over year, if you don't update. The carriers don't care. They, they don't rate on a case by case basis. They rate on what they see on average. And on average, uh, your roof, your electrical, your plumbing, if those are 30 years or older, they see claims very frequently. So they're going to charge appropriately. They don't care if you haven't had claims. They care about what the average is. So please update your panels or else you're just going to be spending money on insurance premiums, not bettering your property, not bettering your business and never getting that money returned to you. Now on the flip side, I want to show you how to use this information to negotiate a lower price for your clients. So don't set your clients up for failure. If you're representing the buyer, get building details, ask what the previous owner has done on updates for the major systems. And if there hasn't been any updates in the last 30 years, that's a red flag. So buildings built in 1990 or older, if they haven't updated one of the four major systems, right? Plumbing, HVAC, roof, or electrical, that is a red flag. That will be a burden on your client. They will have to bear that when trying to find insurance. So don't sell them a bad property. And if you do negotiate the price with the, the, the seller, you know, be like, hey, look, these four things haven't been updated. It's going to cost me this much to replace if I want to have reasonable insurance premiums. You can go about that two ways. Cut a deal, you know, keep the price the same and have the seller, you know, update their property, pay that out of pocket or, you know, take off whatever it would be to up, update that part of the house. Um, the analogy I get for this, this is the equivalent to taking an old car to a dealership to sell, right? You spent money cleaning it up, polishing it, making it look nice, but you know the engine has a lot of issues and that's probably why you're selling it. You'd rather sell it than take care of all those issues. So now the dealership, you take it there. They would never know the car sucks if they didn't open up the hood. But since they opened up the hood, they saw the issues, no matter how nice it looks, now they're going to pay you less for the car because it's not in great condition. Do the same thing for your clients. Yes, the property is in a great location. Yes, they repaired all the holes in the wall and took good care of it while they were there. But have they updated the major systems? You know, if they haven't, you know, make that agreement with the seller to either lower the price or update update them before selling. That'll give your client less of a hassle post close. You know, that'll build your reputation. If you buy them, you know, you sell them a house, 
they go in and then they have to spend $100,000 in repairs or they're paying $50,000 in premium every single year, they're going to probably regret buying that house. So just make them aware and use that information to your advantage. And that's all I have for you guys today. Very good, Keith. And those are ex ex uh, extremely important information. You know, actually, uh, uh, the, it's not just for the new uh, policy. It's even for the existing policy. They are looking at the electric panel, the plumbing, and uh, all the roofing, the repairs, and stuff like that. So I think uh, even for uh, uh, even for for pro, um, proactive action, you should check the um you know existing system in the um in, in the house and uh, for your client and uh, ask them you know uh, advise them to to have those uh, electrical panels and uh, plumbing panels uh, uh updated but the thing is uh, uh kitten you know uh, most of the time uh, it's, it's easy for us to change the, the electrical panel but the plumbing uh is kind of um a, a kind of uh, difficult to do isn't it it is. Um, but again, this isn't really a, a, an issue for properties built 2000 or newer, right? But the older ones, there's a chance, you know, you, they use galvanized plumbing, yeah, right. copper pipes. And then, you know, that just makes it extremely susceptible for, for pipe bursts and stuff like that. And that can be very expensive, right? Right. And you don't have insurance for it, but, you know, so, so how can we... gets and older, you know, you have to take, you know, actionable steps to, to update that building and keep it up with current times. So how can we uh, be sure that this, it uh, it uh, satisfies the standard of the insurance company? For for plumbing? Yeah, for plumbing, yeah. Uh, they just want to see copper pipes. They don't want to see galvanized. They want to see 100% copper piping. If you have I copper piping, think. they can be a little older, but that's that's what they look for. Wow, that can be very expensive. They have to do it for the whole house. Yep, it is very, very expensive. Very expensive, wow. But then that's that's where you have to think about it. It's like if you do have that claim, you're going to be paying three, four, five times more you are in insurance. And again, that's not money you're going to get back. So if you're not spending it on updating the property, you're going to spend that eventually and you're going to be spending on you know money that you're never going to get back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Good advice. Thank you very much. Uh, do you you have your your information in the chat uh, so that people can contact you in case they have they have questions or problems? Absolutely, I will I will drop that in the chat. Okay, appreciate that very much. You have a good day. All right, thank you everyone. I appreciate thank your time you. and thank have you. a good week. All right, uh, now I have um, I got a few announcements to make. Uh, and th this week we don't have a, a lunch and learn on on Wednesday. I think we're taking a uh, the the eighteen um, uh, I mean the the this uh, Wednesday off, but we do have a training on the Friday, and uh, it's going to be on the leasing, right, uh, Michelle? Um, we just concluded leasing uh, last week, so I'll move into the RPA, the purchase agreement. Yeah. Okay. RPA. Okay. All right. And Thursday we 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 have the in in uh, in person meeting too at one o'clock, right? Yes. So, uh, you and I will be there to entertain any questions that, that uh, any agent may have, but they do have to come in person. Uh, there won't be any uh, any um, Zoom availability for that. So so this Thursday at one o'clock at the uh, Hamper office. Okay. All right. Uh, with that, I would like to uh, see what's happening in the uh, Acadia office. Uh, Doug. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Wow, the the heat's gone for a while anyway. Enjoy this cooler weather while we got it. It's supposed to heat up again this weekend, but not as bad as it was. Uh, anyway, here in Arcadia, we have uh, two new listings, three new leases, and three new sales. So let me tell you about our, our, our listings first. We have a commercial lease in Roland Heights on Kalima for $3,000 a month and a residential lease on California and Pasadena, three bedroom, three bath on California for 3,000 a month. That's pretty good. Uh, okay, on our sales and leases uh, in Roland Heights, Teresa Choi, these are all listings by the way. So I encourage you guys to get listings. All these are listings sold. Uh, Teresa Choi had a listing in Roland Heights sold for 720. 
Christy Young had a listing in Monterey Park that sold for nine fifty three. Helen Lee had a lease listing in Arcadia, went out at thirty nine fifty. George Chow had a lease listing in Alhambra, twenty eight fifty. Michael Chan had a um, did a three year lease at twenty eight hundred dollars a month in San Gabriel, and we have our last sale of the day is in Los Angeles. Um, by, by an agent that doesn't want to be named for nine hundred fifty thousand dollars. So, um, you know, things are moving along. Guys, listings are so important. Oh my gosh, all these all these uh, sales and stuff are are, are listings. Uh, you have a lot of control when you have the listings. Don't give up on your buyers, but be careful. But concentrate on listings, okay? Please. Uh, sphere of influence is gold. Uh, just make contacts with people. Go out socialize. Whenever you meet somebody, hand them your card, let them know what you do for a living. Stay in touch with them. Okay? Contact and stay in touch. And for gosh sakes, your sphere of influence can be a gold mine. Okay? So uh, that's it in Arcadia. We'll see you on Thursday, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, yeah you're right. Uh, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the listing uh, is the name of the game, you know, and uh, in order to get more listing, hey, sphere of influence is most important. Because those are the clients that knows you, that uh, that have been uh, in relationship with you, and then you can easily kind of uh, uh, connect them to get uh, again and uh, do some business. Yeah, so, Peter, just just give an example. I kept in touch with this lady for years and years, and unfortunately, she passed away. But now her daughter, because I kept in touch with the with the mother, mm -hmm. wants to list a two million dollar house with me, uh, wow. probably next month. And I got a call over the weekend. Unfortunately. Uh, a good friend of mine's father passed away at 101, and they'll be listing that house in a couple of months. So, wow. uh, you know, it, it's unfortunate the reason we're getting the listings, but the, stay in contact, guys. Yep. Stay in contact. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank thank you, you. Don. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Great job. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. All right. Uh, now, let me uh, report for uh, our Hamper office. In Alhambra, we have uh, one, two, three, or five uh, listings uh, for this week, and then two sales uh, for this week. So the listings, uh, uh, the, actually four of them belongs to the Nina Xu. Uh, she is working on those, uh, you know, 55 uh, condos in the Monterey Park, and uh, the, uh, these four of them are among the 55 that she has listing on, uh, that she, she is presently uh, listing it for sale. So the uh, one is uh, for 982,000 and the other one's for 70, uh, 70 uh, 758,000 and another uh, 982,000 and the uh, fourth one is for 739,000. So uh, very good, uh, uh, Nina, this, uh, good job. Uh, you have the four listings uh, for this, this week alone. Uh, and the fifth uh, listing is for by um, by Rosa Reyes. Uh, it's for the um, uh, income property uh, at um, in Alhambra for eight hundred eighty nine thousand. Um, the the listing uh, commission is two point five, which is not too bad. And as for the sale, the uh, president in escrow, uh, the one is uh, the first one is from uh, from Mandy Zhang uh, as a residence in uh, San Gabriel for two million dollars, uh, and the uh, and the uh, and the other one is uh, as a condo by the Rosa Reyes uh, for six hundred ten thousand. So uh, congratulations. All right, and that is all for the business. Uh, any, any, any um, uh, com, you know, supplement to uh, to the um, to the listing or the sales uh, that uh, I forgot to mention, or you have any reduction in price, uh, or anything from the uh, agents? Please speak up. Any, anyone want to add something before I go into today's uh, presentation sharing today? This is a little bit quiet today, huh? For some reason. <laughs> okay, uh, all right. If no question, I'll go, uh, I'll share the screen now. And I am going to uh, uh, talk to you about, let's see.
where is my oh where where's hold on where's my screen oh Just give me a little moment. Uh, what is your presentation about? It's uh, about the uh, uh, it's about the leasing, the the how to do the leasing after the NER settlement. Okay, hold on, let me. I should have put it. Uh, Okay, can you see the, my uh, share? No. No? Okay, let me go back to the Zoom. Okay, let me see again. See. Is okay. today the moon holiday? Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Yes. My um my share with you is the handling leases and rentals after the uh, NEL settlement. Okay. Um, as last week we uh, went into uh, the leasing. Uh, you know how to do the leasing and what kind of form that we can use. And uh, I want to kind of uh, revisit the issues and 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 uh, uh, kind of. Uh, share, uh, share some some tips with you as, as in terms of this, uh, the forms that you should use. Okay. Um, now, the first question you may ask is that does the NAR settlement apply to leases and the rentals? If, uh, the, uh, the answer is no, it does not uh, apply to leases and rentals. Uh, it Actually, the, uh, the NAR settlement only applies to residential the houses, one to four units. And, and, and it, does, it does not include any the commercial real estate. So if you are doing commercial real estate, then uh, the, the, my advice is that uh, you don't use this uh, uh, car form because in the car form, uh, all the forms are uh, um, updated to fit into the, uh, the residential sales for one, one to four uh, units. So if you are, using, you are doing commercial uh, um, uh, uh, transactions, uh, you should use the AIL form, which is the industrial, um, uh, um, you know, industrial forms, and 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 those forms that you can uh, you can get access to by uh, paying like two hundred twenty nine dollars for the whole year, and then you get you have access to all the uh, AIL forms in, in the library, and which is which, which is pretty good, you know, and uh, because uh, uh, it's, it can get very useful, and those forms are very comprehensive. And 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 then those are the, the forms that are used by the by the commercial the real estate the professional uh, real estate commercial agents. So so uh, I would highly recommend that you uh, get access to those forms. And um, coming back to the the, the leases, uh, and it doesn't uh, the, the NAR settlement does not uh, uh, apply to leases and the rentals. Uh, so um, you know, but the thing is that. Um, but the thing is that uh, in the uh, in the MLS, uh, they they took all they took away all the mentions of uh, com compensation, and there is no way that you can communicate to uh, the the the, um, uh, the leasing agent or the um, or, or the tenants agent that uh, you know you, what kind of a commission that, that you're sharing with them. So it's just like the you know the regular the, um, RPAs that um, in the leasing as listing, and they they don't mention anything about um, uh, about uh, compensation in ML, MLS. So there's no contract there, and there's no 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 promise of uh, of uh, compensation for the uh, leasing agent uh, or, or the tenant's agent. So there's no mechanism to do that. Um, 
since all the uh, compensation field has been removed. So the only th only way that you can communicate uh, to the uh, tenants agent is by uh, using the form TRBC. Now TRBC is uh, parallel to the BRBC. Uh, BRBC is used for the uh, uh, residential, residential uh, house uh, transaction, uh, a sale transaction, uh, and the TRBC is for the leasing uh, uh, residential houses. Um, similarly, uh, it, it contains all you know the provisions of uh, of um, the um, you know, agreements between the the tenants and the uh, and the landlord and how much commission uh, the the uh, the landlord is going to give. Uh, not the landlord, but uh, the tenant. The tenant. I'm sorry. It's uh, between the tenant and the the tenant's agent and how much uh, uh, the tenant's agent uh, will will get compensation uh, compensated. Uh, by the uh, the tenants, and then um, and, and then and then after that, uh, 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 then you, you can use the, the the form LCA, which is the lease uh, rental commission agreement, um, uh, similar to the SPBB in the in the residential transaction or sale transaction. Uh, then in, in this LCA form, then you can communicate to the. Uh, to the uh, sellers, asking them to uh, give the uh, give, give the commission to the uh, uh, tenants agent, uh, uh, similar to the SPBB, uh, and then you can you know uh, uh, similar to the SPBB, you can negotiate uh, uh, the, uh, the the commissions between the 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 landlord and uh, and the um, um, and, and the, the tenants uh, broker. Uh, similar, very similar to the, the SBC, uh, SPBB, and then um, the, in the in the in the uh, uh, listing uh, li leasing lease listing agreement, there's no mention uh, of a compensation language anymore. In other words, uh, broker to broker compensation is off the uh, off the table. They don't they don't uh, they don't provide that anymore because that it will that it, this is confusing and. And now, uh, they, uh, uh, similar to the to the rules in the in the sale transaction, uh, you want to ne negotiate between uh, the the landlord and the uh, tenants agent as to what their kind of uh, uh, commissions that the uh, tenants agents are entitled to uh, uh, to get. And 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 in the in the um, residential leasing uh, agreement, the month to month. Um, uh, that um, the 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 broker section in that uh, in 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 that our 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 MM has a language acknowledging that the two uh, brokers can cooperate. But if they do uh, want to cooperate, uh, you know the language that how do they cooperate uh, should be uh, uh, should be you know um, uh, should be written between uh, the two two. Two parties, and then you should you should get some help with, with the, either the hotline, the, you know the um, <clears throat> the legal hot, hotline, or your your uh, own the attorney to find the language that uh, that you can put in the agreement. And uh, and uh, the car is already they they know that there's uh, still a lot of improve that that still need a lot of improvement in the, the forms. Uh, regarding the lease and rental agreements uh, in this respect. And so they're still working pretty diligently in trying to get the forms appropriate for uh, for the, 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 the lease and the rental agreements, uh, similar to the RPA and the SPBB um, uh, agreements in the sales transactions. So they're working on it. And then as soon as they are available, they will let us know. And when they are available, I will let you know. Uh, but meanwhile, it's, it's just uh, have to have uh, to get used to the to the new um, uh, uh, environment of uh, of the practice of uh, rental and say, uh, and uh, leasing, and um, so uh, that's that's all we can do. Okay, and uh, as I I have a couple of um, you know, legislative updates that I would like to like to mention to you. There are three uh, legislative updates that are important in the. Um, um, in the real estate uh, area. The first one is AB 2992. Uh, at this, uh, this law makes, uh, makes it mandatory 
I mix it a, 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 a statute or a law uh, that requires the, the real estate licenses uh, in California to have a written agreement with the with the um, um, uh, with the cust of the clients that they rec rec recommend. I mean, uh, represent. Um, so it, it's similar to the um, the requirement that uh, you know the car. Uh, or the NAR requires uh, the the uh, the agents to have the uh, agreement like the BRPC uh, before they can show the property. So this 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 is um, make it into law now in, in the in the California statutes. So um, so when they sue you, uh, uh, when they uh, when the um, the the buyer sue you. Uh, for any negligence, uh, things like that, and if you don't have the the, the, the uh, agreement with them, and there will be another uh, cause of action that they, they can go after you for. So uh, this loss is very important. Uh, it's it, I'm I'm sure that soon will be uh, going to pass, and um, and and now they're going to the Senate floor uh, for 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 passage. So so uh, um, you know this I think is going to um, to uh, to pass to be uh, to to be uh, brought into loss pretty soon. The next one is AB eighteen forty. Now this 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 law is introduced um, in the California state legislation, and this uh, deals with the the the, the fire the the, the uh, um, uh, deal with the wildfire in the California, and uh, and they they have uh, rules to. Uh, to uh, ease the, you know, to address the increasing threat of uh, Wi-Fi in the state, and probably want to uh, require something to ease the, or to to mitigate the the situation uh, in in the state as far as while fire is concerned. So when they do that, then you know, hopefully that the insurance company will see that the, uh, that the state is doing something to mitigate the situation so that. Uh, they can uh, um, ease up the, uh, the 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 fire insurance for for the areas that are uh, have very high um, uh, fire hazard zone and uh, and so they can uh, start uh, you know you know uh, uh, issuing the uh, insurance policy for those areas. So this is important too uh, because uh, without this legislation, the, the insurance company. But probably will will be giving the um the, the uh, you know the homeowner a hard time and uh, in terms of not issuing insurance or if uh, adjust the insurance to sky high premium. So uh, this is uh, this is um this is uh, going to be one of the uh, main emphasis in the legisl uh, California legislation. Uh, and uh, the last one is the Proposition Thirty Three. Now this is. Uh, very contentious between the uh, the two groups, you know, when uh, the one is the proponent of this group and the other one is uh, for the um, for the opposition of this group. Uh, California Association Realtor opposed this uh, vehemently because uh, they, when, if this uh, law passed, uh, it will affect, affect the, the landlord a lot. Uh, but what it is, is that uh, this, this will repeal the cost of, Hopkins Rental Housing Act, which is the law that uh, currently limits the local rental control measure by exempting uh, certain type of properties, that, such as like uh, if you have a single family homes or newly constructed uh, buildings, uh, that they are they exempt from rent control. Now, and this 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 uh, proposition 13 will do away with the restriction uh, or of the exemption uh, or, uh, from restriction, and then they will. Uh, uh, they will uh, um, they will uh, make it much easier to impose uh, rent controls on all types of housing, including the uh, single-family residence and the new constructions. So and also um, um, and also it will enable the local authorities to enact vacancy controls, such as that uh, if you if you have you if, if if the house is in the uh, rent control area, uh, it can even extend to. Um, uh, you know, you, you cannot raise the, the 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 rent even for new tenants. That's ridiculous, you know, because uh, you know you yeah, how 
if, if the tenant has been uh, uh, living there for 20 years and the, the rent is really high and now he left, and but the rent control still applies to the new tenants, so that's really not fair for the, the landlord. So, so that's why the uh, California Associates Realtors oppose this vehemently. Um, and this is very destructive to the, the, the housing industry, you know. Uh, after that, who, who wants to buy uh, apartments, you know, in the, uh, in the rent control areas? So this this law, if it passed, it, it, it's, going, it's going to be, have a big impact on the in, in the housing industry. So so um, uh, right now it's still very contentious in the in the, uh, uh, in that legislation, and uh, and uh, we see how how it goes. But hopefully, uh, it will not pass. Okay, and uh, so um, that's. Okay, then, so uh, that's all I have to share. And um, uh, is there any questions regarding today's uh, sharing? Pretty quiet again. Well, we... we <laughs> P Peter. Yeah, Franco. Uh, you were just mentioning one, uh, like two, two uh, uh, boxes ago about them passing legislation about wildfires. Yeah. What does passing legislation, how is that going to pre uh, prevent wildfires? It other than imposing... It, 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 it probably will not prevent it, but it will mitigate it. That in other words, uh, they, they will have uh, more measures to... Um, you know the actual pro uh, process. I don't know, but they will they 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 will have an, an act the city you know, to do more help in cleaning out uh, you know the the um, uh, the, the brush, brush areas. areas. Yeah, stuff. yeah, and stuff like that, and have more fire firemen into uh, into maintaining the the space, you know, and all that, so that the the wildfire will be mitigated. It it cannot prevent it completely. I mean, let's let's. The, uh, no, I understand the wildfires being started by lightning and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. But when you got some idiot starting fires by throwing f f flares into brush areas, yeah, just for the joy, the thrill of it, you know, how do you prevent that? Go, everybody carries a gun, and if you yeah. see somebody doing that, <laughs> shoot them. Yeah, as I said, I agree with you. I know that's no way you can prevent that from happening, but at least you can. Mitigate it or, or say, say something that you know if you uh, if you cause uh, somebody who who's arson then you yeah. have more, you know penalty or whatever and those kind of uh, kind of um, you know scare people I don't know There's, I don't know it's exactly strange. what the exact uh, procedure they want to do. Okay, but they're Thank trying. You. They're trying. Do uh, you have to <laughs> you have to give them the um, all, all I see is them putting more pressure on landlords and homeowners to clean brush, yeah. trees, all that stuff out of their properties. Yes. But yeah, I don't see how, how is the state going to, are they going to go clear all the hillsides in Southern California, especially from the San Gabriel Mountains, get rid of all the, the, the vegetation? You know, yeah, hopefully like, they'll some find some something to mitigate that. You know, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Franco. <laughs> well, dirt doesn't burn, so we have to get rid of all the trees and the forest and everything. So that's it's crazy that that that. Yeah. Peter, I can talk to a little bit about that if you want. Okay, go ahead, John. So basically, what they do is when areas haven't haven't much, received much water, and yeah. areas that are very dry. What they'll do is they'll set backfires to get rid of the vegetation and the brush in order to minimize wildfire risk. But we they happen so often here, and they're done by negligence more than a natural occurrence. And right. uh, they just they don't have time to keep up with it. We still have fires going on in San Gabriel, I mean, San uh, Bernardino County and Orange County. And those were done by neg negligence. But I think what they try to do to minimize is to just set backfires that are controlled and to get rid of fuel. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the only thing they can do. And it usually doesn't happen now because this is our wildfire season. 
So idiots are out there and they're dropping, you know, cigarette lit cigarettes and or starting fires or homeless. Who knows? It's just a bunch of different reasons that it occurs. And the insurance companies, it's going to be a few years before we see them actually actively come back. And that's why you go to an insurance broker who can shop the best rate and actually find an insurance company that's that is issuing insurance because Cal Fire, Cal Fire uh, uh, will will push you or the insurance companies will push you to the fair plan, which is only a band aid. That's not supposed to be there for years. It's just to help people get fire insurance and be able to so that they can continue buying the home and the, yeah. and the mortgage companies are you know happy with that because they got it. But remember, you still got to get the umbrella policy for your homeowner's insurance. So you're going to have two insurers on that property. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask Keaton something, but we didn't get a chance to ask questions to him because he said the buyer can update the, the electrical panel. And after you get the insurance while you're buying the home, you close escrow and you fix the panel. How do you go back to the insurance company and say, lower my premium because I fixed the panel? They're going to say, sorry, pal. No, you can do you can I do know you can do it because I did yeah. it. I changed my panel out too. I took pictures of it and it lowered my rate. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah, they actually will lower your yeah. rate? Yeah, Franco, yeah. We, yes. we actually can do that. I've been able okay. to get creative with certain carriers who don't have them replaced. But if you can provide me with like a, a, a work order from an electrician showing that you will and are in progress of replacing them, they will actually bind you at a lower rate, even if you haven't already replaced them and you have a okay. work order that's paid that I can provide right. them and be like, hey, this will be done in the next three months or so. I thought it was like a car dealership. You drove it off the lot. Sorry, pal. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that is the analogy I use. So sorry, sorry for that confusion. Okay, thanks. Yeah, actually, Franco, you can lower your, uh, your homeowner's insurance by putting a leak detector on your main main the water uh, uh, pipe too, you know? The shut off valve. That, uh, my, I, the I, water I, shut I up valve. On my, uh, my home, and that, that reduced about uh, $90. So. Okay. Anyway, any more question, either for me or for for uh, uh, Kitten or anybody or the, the three days. I mean, we still have a couple of minutes. Uh, we finished early today, so. <laughs> or anybody want to share the 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 frustration and thrills and the practice <laughs> of uh, real estate? <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Well, if not, then I wish you a nice. Uh, week, uh, and have a nice, uh, you know, the, the weather. I think for the whole week is pretty nice, enjoy. Right? Uh, uh, yeah. So, enjoy the weather and then enjoy your, your, your marketing and uh, go knocking. Okay, all right, talk to people. Bye, 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 b